Ladies and gentlemen, children of the interwebs out there, Sebastian Envy, the strong style nerd, strong style cinephile. And I guess in the midst of the fallout from the New York Toy Fair and looking at all the things that I need to spend my money on, that's just going to kill my wallet. Um, I knew they were going to drop a trailer for the Transformers War for Cybertron Netflix series. Came out a couple days ago. I finally just saw it, watched it several times, and just wanted to chime in on it for a scant few minutes. So let us geek about that. Now, the series, which we all knew was coming to Netflix, is going to drop um, this year. Uh, I think it's going to be in the summer. Last time I had read something about it. The official description reads as such. Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy Siege begins in the final hours of the devastating civil war between the Autobots and the Decepticons. The war that has torn apart their home planet of Cybertron is at a tipping point. Two leaders, Optimus Prime and Megatron, both want to save their world and unify their people, but only on their own terms. In an attempt to end the conflict, Megatron is forced to consider using the AllSpark, the source of all life and power on Cybertron, to reformat the Autobots, thus unifying Cybertron, outnumbered, outgunned, and under siege. Huh, get it? Siege. The battle warrior Autobots orchestrate a desperate series of counter-strikes on a mission that, if everything somehow goes right, will end with the unthinkable choice. Kill their planet in order to save it. Interesting. Interesting stuff. Now we're finally going to get a series that takes place in the heyday of the, the Great War on Cybertron. We're not just seeing flashbacks to it like we did with the G1 series, um, like we did with Transformers Prime. We are getting actual boots on the ground on Cybertron during the conflict, during the height of the conflict, which I am definitely excited to see. I was definitely excited at the prospect of that when the toy line came out, of course, and it's not something that we have um, seen since the War for Cybertron and Fall of, Cyber, uh, of Cybertron video games, the High Moon series, which were just phenomenal video games. And of course, in the trailer, we see the two sides of the conflict and how Prime and the Autobots are kind of fighting for their survival, fighting for the, the, the day where they do not have to fight any longer. And then you see Megatron being very much a, a politician in his rallying of the troops, um, talking about conflict being escalated by the Autobots, very much kind of blame shifting to kind of get the other cons under his thumb, under his rule. We see early shots of him addressing a bunch of his um, army in a big coliseum type of thing. We see Jetfire in the background. Of course, we all know the story of Jetfire is him starting off as a Decepticon and then being an Autobot, at least in the, the G1 series. And his toy is a absolute beast of a toy that I'm just so happy to have in my collection. And then we see several shots of fights going on. We see Cog um, on a medical slab with Chromia where he apparently got killed. We know Cog, and then we see a shot where Sideswipe is using parts of Cog to shoot at some Decepticons. And we all, of course, know the gimmick for the toy of Cog is he's a weaponizer that you can take him, break him down, and use him as weapons for the other um, Transformers. There's several um, figures that have that gimmick going for him. So I'm assuming. Um, it's going to be the same thing in there, where maybe not purposely, but it happens just in the heat of battle. He picks up, you know, his pieces and then goes to town on the Decepticons. Now, the voice cast has a whole bunch of people that I don't know. Maybe some other people are out are familiar with them. We have a Jake Fushi as Optimus Prime, Jason Marnaka as Megatron, Lindsay Russo as Alita One. We got uh, we got Bumblebee, Starscream, Ratchet, Jetfire, Shockwave, Red Alert. Magnus, Soundwave, Wheeljack, Impactor, Ironhide, Cliffjumper. Um, some different names and some staples of kind of G1. Um, the one shot that I liked was, uh, uh, which I guess is going to be the grand shot of, uh, a hero shot of Optimus Prime coming to the rescue when uh, Bumblebee and Wheeljack are pinned, um, surrounded by some Seekers, which is kind of, I don't know if it's an intentional throwback to the first episode of More Than Meets the Eye, where the first Autobots we see are Wheeljack and Bumblebee, and they're getting chased by Seekers. So, I don't know if it's an homage to that, but uh, I thought it was, it was the first thing I thought of. So I thought it was a very, very cool shot. Now, visually on first glance, this reminds me of the Machinima series uh, from the toy line, the Combiner Wars trilogy, which was just, oh, good lord, it was dreadful. It, just dreadful just schlock, just, uh, uh, it was just, I'm just, no, I'm just not a fan of it. Just this, this style of animation just really doesn't, um, I just, I'm not a huge fan of it. I know with the uh, Unicron trilogy, um, Armada 
and uh, Energon, and then Cybertron, was that the other series? You can watch them on Tubi TV, which is actually a great app um, and website to watch stuff like Transformers and Cops and Super Sentai and stuff on. It's Tubi TV, it's great, great stuff. But the, the, the visual style just jumps out at me, reminding me of that, and reminding me of the Machinima series, which, like I said, it's, to me it sucked. The voice acting was horrible, and the episodes were horrible as well. So I'm, I'm kind of cautiously optimistic given that. Beyond the visuals, though, given the, I'm hoping for a tone of uh, that really just gives some meat to some of the characters. We see um, Prime and, and Magnus talking about the conflict. We see an instance where Bumblebee is talking to Prime about how the, this conflict is going to get everybody killed. There's just layers to the characters. Not everybody's just a one note. You know, Autobots are good, Decepticons are bad. There's layers and subtlety and nuance with them. Um, Jetfire's, uh, you know, is, is one character to approach that with, where maybe he's on the Decepticon side, he kind of sees things aren't what he thought they were, and he, you know, suddenly, slowly kind of brings up the, the mindset where he wants to defect. Um, Mirage is kind of like one of those characters that, if you go by his comic book origins, um, he might be somebody who may start on the side of the, the angels and then maybe in a bid to just end the conflict could end on, on the side of the Decepticons. It's just, just ways and means you can go about doing it. I'm hoping that there's enough episodes in this, there's enough time put to it to really add some, just some layers um, to these characters and not just stock good and evil characters. But as I've said, with the Netflix shows, with Voltron, with she with some of the others, um, even their live action ones, they have the ability to give us that. So I have high hopes from a narrative character development standpoint for this series. So we'll see. It's coming soon. Not soon enough, but it'll be here eventually. What do you guys out there think? Let me know in the comments below. Follow me on social media. Those are popping up on the screen. And yeah, Transformers. More toys. More pain for our wallets. Meantime, let, let us geek.